It's game time. What's up, Internet? Today, I'm talking about Metroidvania. Now, for the uninitiated, Metroidvania is a fan-made term used to describe 2D non-linear platformers. It's a combination of two game titles, Metroid, obviously, and Castlevania, referring to Symphony of the Night and its derivative games. So, why do I need to talk about this? Well, it's always bothered me that we use the term Metroidvania, because I feel that it's fundamentally flawed. The term is a combination of two different game titles. You know, obviously. But you're using that new term to blanket brand everything that one would think would fit under that term, including those two titles. But those two titles, I've always seen as being fundamentally different. Not just in the sense that one is science fiction and the other is gothic horror, but more from a mechanical standpoint. So, let's just take a quick look at how the two are similar. They're 2D, they have large sprawling worlds, and the progression is typically go from one end of the area, find a new piece of equipment, travel to the next to pick up another one, repeat until you beat the game. But, but if you look a little closer, they're a lot more different than a lot of people think. I played through Symphony of the Night again recently, just to prove my point for this. And I took some notes, and when you pick up a piece of equipment, you progress to the next piece of equipment, and more often than not, you more or less abandon what you previously acquired for the new thing. That's not to say you lose it, but it just loses relevance. I mean, for anyone who's played Symphony of the Night, how many times did you honestly use the mist form after you acquired it? Besides getting through that one grate. Whereas in Metroid, once you pick up a piece of equipment, you're more or less going to be using it all the way through the end of the game. Like, that was part of the brilliance of Metroid's environmental design, was while you were constantly trying to get new equipment to advance your progress, you were constantly relying on your old equipment in order to progress. And part of the charm of Metroid was you were always trying to find new ways to use your old equipment in conjunction with your newer equipment to solve different problems. It was a lot more cerebral. Whereas Symphony of the Night felt like you were taking a key, using it in a keyhole, and then you never had to use it again. In fact, it felt almost kind of like a classic PC adventure game, you know, take the odd-shaped key, put it in the odd-shaped keyhole, get the new oddly-shaped key, find the keyhole that corresponds. In fact, while recording for this on my playthrough of Symphony of the Night, I found a total of two pieces of equipment that I didn't use more than three, maybe four times. And that was the double jump, which I just never bothered to toggle off, it was kind of useful for evading attacks, as well as the bat form which was more or less only useful to find shortcuts to save down on transport time. Whereas in Super Metroid, offhand, I can only think of maybe two pieces of equipment that you never really needed to use more than a handful of times, the grapple beam and the x-ray visor. And if you're handy with wall jumps, you don't even need those. I think the one caveat to all this is speedrunning, though, because you're typically trying to avoid as much stuff as possible to beat the game as quick as possible. However, speedrunners typically know the mechanics and the smaller nuances and bugs in the game better than the programmers do, so they get a little bit of a pass. I'm speaking strictly from an average gamer's standpoint. But my point is, the two games are different. Not just in their themes, but really in their mechanics and in their progression and that creating a blanket term to describe them kinda doesn't work because when you create a blanket term out of the two titles you're equating the two when the two are really not all that equal and even if you discredit the mechanics of progression between the two games if you look at 
the series as a whole, there's far more games in the series than the ones that are used to make this blanket term. I mean, with Metroid, you have the Prime series, Prime Hunters, you have Fusion and Return of Samus, which, while 2D, those were still very linear. You have Other M, as much as no one wants to talk about that. From Castlevania, you have seven or so games prior to Castlevania Symphony of the Night that followed a linear progression. You have Lords of Shadows. You have, I think there's like four remakes of the first Castlevania now. The point is, is the ones that fall under this term are far outweighed by the ones that don't, even within the consistency of its own series. So using that series title to define this blanket term doesn't even make sense. I suppose at this point I should probably come up with some sort of solution or a new term. So offhand I suppose I'd say something along the lines of non-linear platformer, and maybe to seem slightly less pretentious, throw in the term collectathon. But honestly, I don't expect people to not use this term, it's very convenient, and it's kind of burned into us at this point, because they've been around so long. I'm really just doing this so that I can let my feelings out about it, and so that I can inform you that the two are very different. I'm not saying that either is bad, I quite like both. They're just different. More different than anyone gives them credit for. But that's just my interpretation of this term that I think is flawed and kind of stupid. I don't expect people to change, I really don't, but I just want people to realize that the two series are far more different than anyone gives them credit for.